Blizzard has just released a new roadmap together with a lot of new informations for patch 10.1.5 and what shall I say? They did it again. They just keep winning. We have some really cool news about the upcoming mega dungeon featuring Galakrond, a 30 walker spec, changes in dragon riding and much more. So let's take a closer look at everything new, shall we? First let's talk about the dragon riding news, because there's an upcoming event called Kalimdor Grand Prix. There will be 28 different dragon riding courses over Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms. Also at this point there are 89 different old flying mounts, given new animations to make them ready for dragon riding. Including all of the gladiator mounts, except for the ones from Wallace of Draenor since they can fly, as well as basically all the flying mounts that share the same skeleton as the original dragon riding mounts. So we will have dragons, never drakes, frost worms, proto drakes, firehawks, dread ravens, pterodaxes, and the deathworks from the Shadowlands. Sadly, the Legion all home mounts who would fit into this are not included, so death knights and warriors can go cry now. But besides that, this is a really nice change. Also, there are two new spells related to flying flight style static and flight style dynamic, which basically means you can choose if you want to use the dragon riding abilities or the old flying. So if you are still not comfortable with dragon riding, there you go. I could imagine that you have to change your flying style in big cities like Orgrimma or Stormwind and can't just change it mid-flight because otherwise there would be no point of vigor anymore. Anyways, that's all we know so far about the dragon riding changes. So let's talk about another big topic and that is the third evoker spec, the augmentation evoker. This new spec is actually something completely new. We have a new DPS spec but with a huge twist. Augmentation Evokers are basically a support for the group. They deal damage by empowering other players. For example, they can buff the tank with a spell Blistering Scales, protecting them with Explosive Dragon Scales, which give him additional armor and explode when struck by a melee attack, dealing damage to enemies all around him. Another example is their new Deep Breath ability. The Breath of Eons is exposing temporal wounds on the enemies, which accumulate a portion of the damage dealt by allies and then dealing all the damage at once at the end of the duration. They are still much unknown, but I am really looking forward to this, since this is a completely new game style, which sounds really interesting, although it might be difficult to balance, especially for both Mythic Plus and Raids. But we will see. And do you know what we will see as well? Galakrond in the new Mega Dungeon. Ok, I know, I got you hyped now, but don't get too excited, we don't even know yet if we will actually fight him. In the Mega Dungeon Dawn of the Infinite, we will try to stop a Redicorn and some infinite dragons from... Well, we don't really know yet, but it involves Galakrond, and he is absolutely massive. The dungeon also involves an infinite dragon version of Kuomi, but as I said, at this point we barely know anything, and everything is up to speculation. Then there is also a new public event called Time Rifts, which we don't know much about, but we do know that there are some new mounts to obtain from here, which are all recolors, but from them we might conclude what we are doing in these events. Apparently we will go into these time rifts and hold back some waves of minions who are coming through there and a mount like the Scourgeborn Frostwood Vanquisher definitely hints at the Scourge and perhaps an Arthur's appearance, while a mount with the name Juggernaut Perfected definitely hints at some Siege of Orgrimmar stuff and perhaps a Garrosh from another timeline? I guess we will see, but this definitely could be interesting. Next we have a return to Naxuamas. Just like they added old recipes to the group, they are now also adding old vanilla recipes that got lost with the removal of Nax40 back to the game and also a brand new mount that you can get in Nexomamas and that is the skeletal horse Valiance, which is the same horse that got used by the horseman Thane Corthas, which is a mount I ever wanted since I first saw it back in Wrath, so I'm really looking forward to this. And at last we have a little change and that is that every race will be able to play as a warlock. So additionally, we now have Night Elves, Draenei, Lightforged Draenei, Pandaren, Kultiren, Tauren, High Mountain Tauren, Makaha Orcs and Zandalauri Tools. Also as a Warlock you will have an upgraded Imp model and you can customize all of your pets at the barbershop. So that could be pretty interesting. There are also some small changes like the Dalawan and Garrison Halfstones becoming toys and stuff like this, but the most important things should be covered now. What is your favorite change or addition from all of this? Let me know in the comments below. Also make sure to leave a sub to not miss any information in the future and I hope to see you next time. Until then, see ya!